Roberts. What's your take of the Trump peace plan? Well, I think the first thing we have to do is uh, is uh, separate our analysis plan from the partisan political atmosphere that prevails in the United States today, and just look at it um, uh, for its on its merits and on its limitations. That's hard to do. I understand that's hard to do, but it's really important because otherwise, um, you're letting um, uh, your political prejudice influence your analysis, and we want to neutralize that. Um, the plan has, I think, three key levels of analysis you could do. There are assumptions of the plan, there are the principles of the plan, and there are the details of the plan. Uh, and it's important not to not to reverse the order of discussion and get lost uh, in the details before you look at the assumptions and the principles. So the core assumption, I suppose, is that the end of the conflict is important. Right? I mean, why have a proposal? There have been administrations that didn't make a proposal. By the way, the Obama administration basically dropped the whole issue at one point uh, and focused elsewhere. Um, the idea that this that resolving the conflict could have a positive effect on the U.S. position in the Middle East, on Israel's position in the Middle East, is the basic underlying assumption of this initiative. And it's, there's a bit of linkage in here. In other words, it's important because it connects with the way the U.S. is perceived in the region and the way Israel is perceived in the region. So that's one uh, core assumption. And I think the second core assumption is that you can't convert history. You know, history only goes in one direction. Um, and that's reflected in the principles. Now, there are two key principles here. One is um, in a, that there's no way that um, you're going to see the massive movement of peoples uh, or parts of peoples as a consequence or, in, 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 or as, a, uh, as an element in any solution. What does that mean? Anyone who thinks that 80,000 or 50,000 or 20,000 settlers can be removed from settlements under any political constellation, which is, an imaginable, which is imaginable in Israel today, is simply dreaming. It's not going to happen. And the second, that anyone who imagines that the West Bank or Gaza could absorb other huge numbers of Palestinian refugees, really descendants of refugees from other countries, is also dreaming. So everyone stays in place in uh, this plan. And uh, I think that's a core principle. And the other core principle, and you can get around it, is that the United States remains committed to a two-state solution. It has been since 1947. Even a man now described as Israel's best friend in the world still cannot put on the table that doesn't highlight two-state. And then the rest are details. We can discuss the details. I think that they're the most flexible part of the plan. In fact, as Jared Kushner indicated, they're all open to negotiation. I'd say that even includes Jerusalem. It certainly includes the borders and the, uh, that are proposed in the conceptual map. Um, so, in, so in a way, it's pointless, lost in the details at this point. It's much more important to focus on the assumptions and the principles. So let's talk about the conditioning of the Palestinian people before we even have any uh, you know, uh, principles associated with the peace deal, because as far as they're concerned, anything that this president or whether it be Benny Gantz or Benjamin Netanyahu offers to them, they'll say no. A hundred years right. of Palestinian rejectionism, and, and I'm sure you're familiar with the campaign that the Middle East Forum ran in Israel last summer associated mm -hmm. with our Israel Victory Project, the idea that you can only make peace with defeated enemies, those who recognize a sense of defeat. What's your right. take on that idea? Do you think that there's a way to the Palestinians to give up on Samud, their uh, steadfastness, their rejectionism, Sirbanut, as it's called in Hebrew, or are we in for this for another hundred years? Look, let, let me first begin by making a minor correction to the way you described the plan. You called it the peace plan. It's not a peace plan, it's a partition plan. And a partition plan doesn't have to be accepted. In fact, no partition plan was ever accepted by the Palestinians in order to have historic effects. Okay? The 1947 plan by the United Nations, which was accepted by the Zionist movement and was rejected by the Palestinians, still had transformative historic effects, creation of the State of Israel. So, and, and, and what characterizes a partition plan is that basically it's the proposal of a third party looking from the outside that has some authority, whether it be the British in 1937 when they proposed a partition plan, or the United Nations in 1947, or the United States today. So in a way, the importance of the plan has, and, and, uh, is, uh, transcends whether either of the parties accept it. And I don't think 
that the Palestinians can accept it, will accept it, uh, given their state of their, um, um, <clears throat> their, their mismaking in their political vision. There are plenty of elements in the plan which Israel really can't accept either, although Israel will accept in print the, the assumptions and the principles without accepting necessarily the details. So, um, but that doesn't mean the plan won't have an effect. And so the question is if the plan is never implemented, it will never be implemented on all its details. It might not even be implemented in other respects. Um, but what will be its historic effect? And I think that the, the, what will be transformative here for the Palestinians too is that they will begin to understand that history only runs in one direction and that the world is moving gradually to, a, to an accommodation with the facts of history. The Palestinians haven't done that. Um, and the reason they haven't, part of the reason, isn't just because they're hidebound. It's because the world has told them again and again that history can be reversed. Um, and even the United States at various times has told them that history can be reversed. When people stop telling Palestinians that history can be reversed, that is the beginning. That is the beginning of wisdom for the view of the Palestinians. And so that's the effect of the plan. And that's why the plan is so important. It begins uh, with the United States will percolate to other uh, states in the West and Arabs. And the Palestinians will begin to understand that their demand for reversal of history has no support from anyone else. Right. You write in an article that you wrote on the 102nd anniversary of the Belfort Plan on October 31st of last year regarding this issue, that when the Declaration clearly marked the beginning of the end of the Jewish problem as Weizmann and the Zionists understood it, not that there was any Jewish problem, but contextualizing that, for the way in well, which Weitzman was, used that phrase, actually. Right, but I'm, I'm disagreeing Weitzman with Weitzman. I'm saying that the yeah. Jewish problem for yeah. Europe, you know what? It's your problem. Deal with it. All right. Uh, right. You know, right. it's uh, the, the same exact idea that it's you know Jewish quandary. I wouldn't call it a problem per se. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. As Weitzman and the Zionists understood, it, a total absence of power that left the Jews as wanderers, vulnerable and weak. What will it take to realize on the Palestinian side? that there is a vacuum of power there. They have no legitimacy in the eyes of many Arab states now. Now, in the eyes of these Arab populations, maybe. They have no ability to control their ability of, of uh, telling their leaders what to do unless they openly revolt. And even if that happened, the IDF might come in and save those leaders who are providing sort of a Faustian bargain for security, as it relates right now, to at least the West Bank. And they're suffering. I mean, their brand is crisis. How do we get the Palestinians to realize, like the Jews realized, you know, I guess it was 1948, so 72 years ago now, that the gig is up. You've lost. It's time mm -hmm. to develop your own polity, not based on rejecting another. How, how, do we, how do we get there? Well, you just did it yourself. You have to begin to tell them the truth. Now, coming from Martin Kramer <laughs> or from you will have no effect on them whatsoever. Um, but when they start to hear it, from the very same quarters, which historically and traditionally had been supportive of uh, their demands, then that will begin to have an effect. And that's why, um, as I've argued elsewhere, what's really important for the Trump plan to have that historic effect to be marketed to the Europeans, to the Russians, to the Arabs, so that while they may not enforce it, in fact, very few of them will openly endorse it, many of them will reject it, they will begin to echo some of the assumptions and principles that are in the plan and, and, and go to the Palestinians and say, look, we understand why you reject the plan that's full of flaws and so forth and so on, but the basic assumptions and principles have some validity. And when they begin to hear that from friends, not from you and I, but from their friends, then that will have an effect. Um, uh, you know, they can, it, 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 in a way, the responsibility, much of the responsibility for the predicament of the Palestinians today relies not just on them, but on their friends, or would-be friends, or supposed friends, who lied to them, misled them, and promised they would deliver to them on fantasies which were completely detached from reality. And so um, I don't see that, the, the, and I think Jared Kushner also would not see the Trump plan as some unilateral American act. Even the Balfour Declaration, which I wrote about and you've mentioned, was not she cleared it with all their allies in advance. And I showed that in an earlier uh, study. It was like a Security Council resolution practice. <laughs> the U.S. has put this plan on the table. Now what it has to do is not to get endorsement of the full plan from anyone, but to get 
other parties to echo elements of its assumptions and principles and play those back to the Arabs and especially 